Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting club again. The cast from the host Imperial Dane, featuring today one versus one again on Moscow Outskirts. I got a nice little handy dandy game right here for you to watch. A few th nice things to see here. A few hopefully nice things to learn as well. Although I'm sure there'll always be that one guy that goes, "No, that's completely impossible. That's not right." The other guy is a noob, whatever. Excuses, excuses. Anyways, a one versus one, we shall be watching Morgengrad. A terrible place, a place of foreboding. The place even Comrade Stalin does not wish to go. Morgengrad. Anyways, yeah, he's also a gentleman, it seems like, fighting for the Soviet Union, moving out in the name of the 10th Tank Corps, taking on. Sage of the 6th and the 18th Panzer Grenadier Division. It's going to be a bit of a clash between two pioneers here from him. MD42 on the way from Sage of the 6th. Not too much here from Morgengrad. With his conscript Nikki moving out here towards the right hand side. Initially securing the munitions while all that at the same time Sage of the 6th is securing his munitions. Damn, I can't keep saying Morgengrad like that. That's definitely going to tear up my voice thingy. So that's probably something I should be a bit sparing on unless I fancy not being able to talk for a while. Anyway, so there we go again. Ooh, rowing within the first few minutes to sort of really get that extra boost on the conscripts. Costs only five minutes, so it's not like you're hugely set back by this little sprint. And you get to burn off some of that fat on those conscripts. MG42 on the way, Grenadiers following up here. Likely we'll be moving here to connect the western resources. Although the eastern one is a bit more important since the fuel point is closer there. Initial engagement is in combat engineers versus pioneers. And the small collection of farms to the west. How shall the pioneers react to this threat since they definitely can't handle that? MG42 watching over here. Grenadier squad arriving there. Looks like the pioneers pulled back fully. A third squad of Enemy conscripts for Morgengrad. And a second MG42 on the way there for Sage of the Six and the 18th Panzer Grenadiers. Pioneers reporting objective captured. Point being secured there, Grenadiers Enemy moving up. I know where is what awaits them. And there we go, the conscripts open up, finding a way with the Mosin Nagans. Once they're being secured, so it's advancing all across, making good use of their ability to apply early pressure and secure as much of the map as, as possible. Can't you are running into some rather dedicated German resistance, and there we go, a full retreat in the face of the fascists. Another MG42 popping out, therefore, Sage of the Six. Molotovs here against, and in fact, we're seeing a slight combination of the trick from Company of Heroes. One that is, you know, lopping the door at the grenade, but even if he doesn't get out, he's still going to suffer a bit of damage. But here, he was actually molotowing the front door. Which is definitely a bit of an interesting combination again of, you know, the old lob a hand grenade at the door. Hope the enemy thinks it's going through the window, pops up, gets blasted. But here, I mean, it'll actually still do some damage to the troops inside. So, I mean, in that case, it's really a lose lose proposition. So that's actually the quite nasty, I think. The turning won't have the full effect as if it was locked into the house, but still seem to do able to do some damage. Pani is engaging another squad of conscripts. Sage of the six front lines being rather overextended. We also see him making a very bold push here for the fuel point. Hoping to deny, of course, the Soviets, of course, denying them some taking. Going straight for the munitions point right next to Sage of the Six Base, but it is might be diverted to deal with that. We are also seeing the support weapon company going up there for Morgengrad. And the MG4 here gets outmaneuvered. Sage of the Six needs to pull it back. Wixug. Finally gets around to do it, and the comic is allowed to take the missile point there, so the is being shifted over there. Simply too much going on for Sage of the Six at the moment. He's trying to do too much, he's trying to hold too broad a front line, and it rather means that. Well, pretty much Morgengrad is pushing through everywhere. 
So that is mildly put a slight issue right there for Sage of the Six. He needs to pull back his troops. He needs to form a more cohesive front line, do some damage, and then push forwards against the Soviets. But he first needs to basically blunt in the spearhead, which is currently going against him, and throw it back. Which is rather what is currently not quite working out there. Common in here is now continuing to delay. We even see mines up there. Very nasty, very bold, very aggressive play there from him. Oh, getting got out. Molotov's here getting lopped, setting the wooden cart on fire. And he is pulling back. Likely going to wall over the cover there for some, well, cover. Since again, you have to remember, offense is directional. If there's nothing between you, there's nothing to absorb the bullets. And there we go, before zooming up from the other angle. Can it open up? Can he stop the conscripts? Combat engineers moving up there. Securing points desperately. And there we go, the conscripts are run off with considerable casualties, although they have reached Veteran G1. We are also not seeing any taking up going on currently for Sage of the Six, is in fact a bit delayed. Possibly due to having to manage so much currently, and we're also noting here a fuel cache going up for Morgan Grad. Perhaps realizing he can't hold the fuel point at the moment, and this one has been rather indefinitely held away from him. Oh, Pioneer Squad went down there. Forgot to defragment, by the way, so my apologies. We are seeing a response here from Sage the Six. He's getting a sniper. He's going to drain the life out of the Soviet army. Also, what currently seems to be happening is he's rather going for a well an old Wehrmacht build that is two pioneers, two grenadiers, two MDs, and a sniper. Though he currently suits definitely much more heavy of a tier one than he was in the first game. And back again, lost a few seconds there. My apologies. Contrast advancing there, securing fuel points with, in fact, MGs both places. Clearly, Sage of the Six knows what he wants, and he also knows what Morgan Garad wants to a certain extent. Of course, at the same time, Morgan Garad also knows what he can do, and that's also go after all the connecting points with the fuel, harassing Sage of the Six that way. And we also know that Sage of the Six has gone for the. Assault Support Doctrine, getting Opal Blitzes, Officer Strafing Runs, Tiger Tanks, and Fragmented Bombing Runs. Has well... We have casualties. The amount of jobs I'm having, this is certainly getting a bit awkward, and there we go, we're seeing an Opal Blitz truck arrive. Panzer are going to do this, we'll actually have the infantry motorized, although this course one is one from the supply columns. Going to secure the resources. And gain him a bit of extra munitions and fuel. Field guns up for Morgan Grad. He knows what to expect as well. Tank of E Battalion command up for Morgan Grad. At the same time, Morgan Grad moves swiftly onwards towards bigger and more armored things. And there we go, Conscripts going for the fuel point, but immediately finding themselves under intense empty fire. But again, pull up behind the trees and some of the hedgerows. Ensuring the MG can't hit them, but we do see the MG crew swiftly moves about. We also see here that Sage of the Six is more stable as a front line. We also know here the MG42 was up maneuvered. He took a much longer path and thus ended up either way catching the MG crew in the way. But still, sometimes it's a good idea to sort of shift machine gun crews, anti tankers, and such after the first engagement so the enemy can't. will have to keep guessing as to their actual position. Conscripts here taking some losses. Sniper moving up. Two kills so far. Still two kills. Grenadiers with light machine gun, in fact, now equipping all of his grenadiers with light machine guns and ignoring the light to company. We're seeing him moving straight on for the support armor core. Securing points. Yeah! Slowly advancing in the name of Das Vaterland, yeah. and there we go. Already the T-70 light tank has arrived for Morgengrad. Crew coming a bit under fire there as light machine guns range in. It looks like Heinz got a bit cut off from the rest the of the group, and he got cut down in response. 
West flank that was utterly collapsing for the 18th Panzer Grenadiers. We will likely be seeing some sort of armor out soon enough-ish. But in the meanwhile, that T-70 light tank is definitely going to have fun. Coming is moving up, getting fired down by the MG. Field gun blasting away. Sniper pulling a bit back. Grenadiers in a dangerous position. But at the same time, now the field gun is also exposed. Now there's nothing covering it. Can take to the six push forwards and clear down. In fact, it's time to look over Morgan Garrard, who's gone guards motor himself. He's got guards in G heavy mortars. In fact, he's calling in one right Order now to bombard the fascists. Conscripts make a run there, walking. Oh, apparently, though, Sage of the Six was already moving about there and reacts a bit too slowly. Fighting across many places. The MG42 there getting spotted, harassed by the T70 again. T70 elect, excellent as a harassment vehicle. And there we go, we see that the machine gun dies a horrible death. And of course, at the same time, Morgan Grad knows here from the minimap, and I'll just briefly again show. You can see there's always a small outline in the sectors where the Orbit Blitz are. And thus, he's actually going to hunt it down with the T70, which is rather how you, for example, counter this. It's quite easy to knock out. A few more shots, and I mean, turning out its place, and there we go. Orbit Blitz gone. 200 manpower gone, we're seeing another moving up to secure the munitions there. Grenadier snipers fighting here versus the conscripts, sending them running. Well, another the Grenadier squad push up here. Getting the field gun and perhaps the mortar. Looks like he's making a rush straight for sake of the Sixers base. At the same time though, a Sturmgeschutz has arrived for the Panzer Grenadier division. Already getting off one nice hit there on the T-70 light tank, second shot misses. Field gun heavy mortar almost down, in fact he was rather slow there but even then, 1 in 20 mortar, surprisingly enough only requires one man to operate, so can get away with only one man. And T-70 light tank conducting a bit of a power slide there before getting out of there. Coming here might go down and a second T-70 light tank popping out. Ever so easy to produce, quite cheap. They only cost about 160 man, about 55 fuel. And again, I mean, I know some people are awfully concerned with that fuel and certainly that's also important, but manpower is still the most important resource for all. Oh, heavy mortar conducting some nasty losses there on the Germans, forcing the Grenadiers away, although they might still get the fuel point. Continue fighting there for the munitions right next to Sage of the Sixth Space. And there we go. T70 moves in. Oh, Panther fast before he gets crushed. But that last kind of idea is gone. Too slow to react there. Too slow. And making a run there might even steal the ME42 Sage of the Six. And the 18th Panther kind of ideas are under a lot of pressure. And the Stuk is moving in on its own. Generally not where you want to have them going. They are not tanked. Oh, mine went off due to the heavy mortar. That's definitely not too good. But there we go. Looks like it might have spotted its prey. Generally though, you want... Ooh, gets the fuel cache. Will it get the T-70? Or will the T-70s get it? One hit. One more shot and that could be it. And there we go. Abandon, in fact. That was a bit fortunate there. Will he try and knock it out? Permanently. No. Oh, the T-70s saved. And we see actually him popping smoke. Not part of this. Sunday smoking challenge, but unless still good to see, you know, using smoke to obscure the line of fire and opponent allowing another unit to pull back. So well done there by Morgan Grad. And again, going for the harassment. Again, a really well used there of units. Sniper's coming point. It looks like a small flare mine went off, thus alerting basically that something's going on here besides you know the point being taken Orbital Blitz moving on as well in fact two Orbital Blitzes so also of course a note with all this harassment of course all the Orbital Blitzes is there's a lot of unit manpower not going towards frontline units not going towards Grenadiers tanks or anything Grenadiers launching an assault rifle grenades flying out almost getting the MG crew but looks like the last man Fedorov makes it out of there but then the Stug arrives and the MG still escapes so that was a bit anticlimactic. 
Still, two T-76 still there. In fact, they could knock out the Stuga if they outmaneuver it. Which would definitely be a problem for Sage of the Six, less so for Morgengrad. Point secured. Not entirely sure what Sage of the Six is fully up to here with the Stug. Seems to be operating as a tank, and of course, in the Panzer Grenadier Division, they were usually handed out to tank battalions, but even then, you'd they usually use it as a Stug, so less than solid Stug handling there, I'm afraid, from Sage of the Six. But of course, doing his best to secure as many resources, as much munitions, as much fuel, and definitely a lot of munitions that way, which would, of course, also inform some of his other ideas. Control taking sniped, field gun moving up slowly, sniper needs to be careful. Sage of the Six has a slight tendency, it seems, of overextending certain units that should not be overextended. In particular when he knows there's a T-70 light tank nearby. In which case I would definitely describe that as hubris. And that sniper is definitely going to regret Sage of the Six as hubris. Nowhere to be seen, no mine to cover the retreat path either. Generally, a bad idea from Sage of the Six. Could have been executed better, definitely. And in fact, Sage of the Six is suffering a lot of losses again due to the T70s. That one has got nine kills, a lot of them are clear wipes of a unit. Hands are for arriving. Likely would have been a command tank of some sort. As some of the Panzer Battalions with Stooks did have Panzer Force there for command tanks. And there we go, T-70 getting hunted down. Grenadiers assaulting the field gun. Will the Stoog be able to get the T-70s? Oh, shot misses, shot misses. Strafing run going in, strafing run. Can they get the field gun? They need to get the field gun though. Stoog gets hit, kills one of the gunners. Not long to live, not long to live. Conscript's getting pinched. Duke, though, will go down, I fear. And there we go. Oh, main gun destroyed. It's still operational. And there we go. T-70 is getting Panzer 4, though, arrives. Definitely not the best use of the Stoog. Again, it is not a tank. It is a Stoog. It is quite handy what it does. But again, it needs to be used as a Stoog. That means in support of other units. Usually more Stoogs or infantry. Or Panzers. Gun it is retreating. One T-70 down, field gun cleared out. Strafing run sets about one small, pinning down the troops. Doing what it's supposed to do. T-70 rushes straight into the German base. Pandemonium and chaos ensues. Not sure why the Panzer IV isn't reacting to this. Or has he other plans of dealing with this tiny tank? Orbital Blitz likely will go down. And looks like the Panzer IV actually was able to wipe out a squad. Orbital Blitz down, MG needs to vacate the premises. More Grenadiers arriving. And there we go, Panzer Faust gets the engine. MG needs to vacate, vacate! Oops, ooh. Apparently they did not make it out of their Schnell and they died a horrible death as the roof collapsed on their helmeted heads. Panzer 4 moving in straight after the heavy mortar and the T-70 actually went down. Might have been knocked out by Panzerfaust. 18th Panzer Grenadier Division though is in a dire state at the moment having suffered some huge losses. And another strafing run to cover the Panzer force operations, rather bold. Penning down some troops. Plenty of munitions, by the way, for Morgengrad. Guards infantry suffering a bit there. We have a new unit. Yes, no German infantry moving to support. They're busy dealing with the flank issues. T-70 arrives. Aircraft continues to cause considerable losses to the Soviet army. 
He might want to consider actually pulling out of there, and just, there we go. Heavy mortar not looking so good. Not looking so good at all. No, he's driving the Panzer Vos straight into the enemy's base. Get it back, get it back for repairs. You're being a bit too bold there, Sage of the Six. Conscripts running into a bit of problems. Troops enforcing. Bankrupt like the Medic Bunker. Not really much else to build in a base. T-70 flanks about. Come on, say it, give it the six, what are you doing? I have, has he just decided he can't say and he's just going to kill us much with it before he blows it up? Nah, not really sensibly done. I do believe he could have salvaged it. And there we go, a T-34 arrives. Blitzing it up, trying to crush as many troops as he can. But there we go, T-34 stops it in time. But we do see that... Morgengrad has suffered a bit in the face of this fascist panzer. Bobby Alters, he's taking some losses as well. He's lost lots of over blitzers by now. MGs, Pioneers, Grenadiers. Oh, roll, he's suffered the most. Plus, of course, a Stug and a Panzer IV. Another Stug is on the way. Pioneers here running into heavy fire from the Soviet tanks. And another Pioneer Squad bites the dust. And we immediately see him retreat from most of the frontline positions, and he realizes he needs to get out of there quickly before the tanks sit upon him. And he suddenly can get that Stug out of there, at least out there on the field to face. The Soviet tanks also noting here a half track out from Morgengrad. I wonder what he could be wanting to do with that. Grenadiers here though need to retreat. Come on. A bit too slow. Again, too slow. Too slow. As a German, you can't afford to spread out so much. That's currently what Morgengrad is rather heavy handedly punishing. And they said Sage of the Six is basically currently trying to hold too much of the map, which is something you really shouldn't be doing on this map. It's not really built for that. Once more infantry replacements will be needed. And of course we immediately see here that Morgan Grab pulls his tanks back. He's not going to retain them one position at a time. Guards infantry marking about again securing the munitions clearly to feed this ability if only there was some sort of oh I don't know anti-aircraft based counter providing some sort of heavy machine gun fire to shoot down aircraft if only that was some sort of unit that could be upgraded with that oh dear I simply don't know surely it's not this you know the anti-aircraft half-track <coughs> Guards infantry moving in. Guards infantry advancing. Where is the Stug? There we go. And there we go. Gets off a nice kill. Killing one guardsman, wounding the rest severely. T-34 going to move in, might get a nasty surprise, although Sage of the Six needs to point it properly. <laughs> there we go, Panzer Faust it, Panzer Faust it. Make it so it can't escape, come on Sage of the Six. Damn it. Finally did it, but a bit too slow. Now it's going to just need to get out of there before they get blasted. it. Stug Marine to get the kill on the t -fet. no. Sage of the Six can't seem to decide what to do, apparently. Conscripts are likely going to get an anti-tank, and we're seeing a second Stug. The second Stug arrives, opening up the Conscripts. Grenadiers holding out in the building versus an MG-42, quickly cutting the support team members down. And there we go, the T-34 bites the dust. 
Lots of fighting all across the front. T7 moving forward. Half tech moving up to support everything here. MG42 is down. Conscripts have secured the MG42. Stooks are trying to crush them. Not quite having any success. MG crew here in the building in trouble. Grenadiers versus Comet Engineers fighting all across the front here between the 18th Panzer Grenadiers and the 10th Tank Corps. Stooks are rolling. Stooks are rolling. So off. And again losing Grenadier squads, not having pioneers. Sage of the Six needs to pull it together. He keeps overextending himself, I fear. I do believe it's time for the mid-game analysis current situation. Well, I mean he's holding most of the map, but again he's having trouble holding it. He's trying to operate his dukes as tanks, which is, as you sort of noticing, not quite working out fully for him. The sort of strategy he's trying to apply with them is having a few troubles because he's not so props properly supporting them. He's lost some already and had some with damaged engines. He might also want to consider upgrading with the light machine guns to increase their anti-infantry firepower, in particular when they're working together. And meanwhile, we're seeing, you know, Morgan Grant applying excellent pressure all across the front line, doing damage here, here, having the T-70s rush around, hit the weak spots, do a lot of damage, then pull out before Sage of the Six can usually respond with overwhelming force. So in that sense, very light for the strategy. We're also now, of course, seeing him getting the counter, the anti-aircraft half-track, to try and deal with any strafing runs. And this half-track can deal with it, in particular, against Veteran 2, and thus a damage bonus. It's definitely going to cut down those fascist Stukas from the Luftwaffe. So that's something to consider there. Of course, at the same time, he needs to be careful. He needs to not lose so many units because he has suffered some considerable infantry losses. But still, as long as he keeps it up against Sage of the Six, keeps pressing all across, he's going to hold out quite nicely. So that, of course, is something to consider. I mean, for Sage of the Six, he needs to pull back his front line. He needs to decide on what he wants to hold. Does he want to hold along here? Or does he want to hold along here? He needs to hold side basically some area cementing around two victory points and then try to hold the rest of the goddamn map slowly working wa his way from there but he's trying to hold too much he's constantly shooting about and now he's allowing too many openings for Morgan Grad to rush in and do a lot of damage I mean as the Oster, the Germans you initially want a tight front and then you want to work your way from there what you don't want is trying to hold the entire half of the map and then, of course, be unable to do so and allow the Soviets to sneak in. But let's get back to the fight. Will he be able to get that T-70? There we go, one hit. Another Opel Blitz. How about some officers? Again, he's... I mean, note all the Opel Blitz he's done, of course. Note how well Morgan of course, has countered them. That, of course, is also important. But again, so much manpower has been expended on the trucks, not on combat troops. That really ought to be, ought to be an indicator of how things are actually looking. And there we go, another Grenadier squad lost. And that Opel Blitz still hasn't been, I mean, Stug has still not been repaired. So in many senses, Sage of the Seat is committing some... Grim mistakes, we're seeing another T-34 arriving there for Morgengrad. Doing quite well with the strategies, planning course, just the pressure he's applying. S allowing the troops to pull back, using his veterans 1 T-70 to take the point. Well done there by Morgengrad. Well thought, well responded, well adapted. We are taking and there we go. Stuka went down. Half track got it pretty quickly. I don't know where it went down, but it is dead. No crash at all. Oh well, either way, that is gone. And again, note how quickly that anti aircraft half track did it. As soon, of course, it was able to spot it within range. I mean, in the HV, in some certain range, but again. It does quite all right. Yet again, some people just seem to neglect it or feel apparently they shouldn't be forced to get an anti-aircraft unit to counter an air unit. I know it sounds utterly absurd. You should just be able to weather the shots and the bombs and all that. And again, he's insisting on sending a stoop, which barely can maneuver out to try and hunt down a tiny light tank. That's really just 
but thinking now from seat of the six trying to fit something into a row it simply isn't built for and he's still operating with the other stoop there again as a tank yeah. it's not good again it's not a tank it's an assault gun it's meant to work with infantry there we go the veterans you won a small victory for Zreich very close to getting it if you can get a Panzerfaust off Panzerfaust come on no, Stug secured it, knocked it out. Still need some Panis repair, getting another Panzer IV. Another T-70 rolling out there, T-34 waiting over there. More field guns arriving for Morgengrad to shore up the front line there. T-70 taking damage, of course, quickly moving beyond and behind the MD-42. Will the Stu be able to stop it? Oh, the Stu misses! And of course, now the T-70 can actually get behind. There we go, the Stu is in dire straits. And again, Sage of the Six needs to stop treating his Stu as tanks. Which is rather the problem. He is. But we do finally see an actual tank arriving. But we also see here that the Stug is in a very bad place. Territory secure. Point secured. T-34 moving up. And of course, flanking the Stug. Well done, well done. And there we go. T-34 gets the Stug with a final shot. Can the Panzer IV get it? No, Panzer IV misses. Advance going up there. And there we go. T-70 down. And the T-34 rams the Panzer IV and actually mobilizes it. That's quite rare. But definitely means no, neither of them is going anywhere. Got a deer stop from mounting there by a rather solid wall of Russian fire. Trying to repair the T-34, they are taking heavy losses. And now we're actually seeing Pioneers finally getting trained as well. Of course now they need to get over there and that Stug also needs to get over there to cover the Panzer IV. As we're now seeing in fact all of Morgengrad's forces being rushed towards there. And of course the mortar firing away as well with only two friendly kills on this one quickly shredding the grenadiers we have a DP Stug needs to point in the right direction Sage Oh dear. And he's got nowhere near enough infantry to support it. Grenades going up, clearing up lots of the pioneers. Panzer IV likely to be a loss. He actually pulled away his Stug. Sage of the Sixth Plan seems to be floundering a bit, falling apart a tad. As the tenth tank corps pushes on, and there we go, the Panzer IV is a complete loss. They've opened up on us. AT gun ready. Stop your whimpering. Stug moving out again. Troops reinforcing. We are noting here, of course, that Sage of the Six forces are not fully, you know, holding up well either. But again, they're doing better than Sage of the Six, and ultimately, you know, he's handling his resources a bit better. Ooh. Heavy Mulder actually doing some losses to its own men. Four killed all of a sudden there of the friendlies. Conscript suffering a bit. Stu pulling away. T-34 moving in. 
And there we go, conscript sort down and MG42 for the Grenadiers to secure. There we go. Fighting for the victory points, things are looking reasonably equal in that direction. Sage of the Six still holding on. Quiet on the field. Again. Also, no problems with fraps anymore. That's lovely. Just a rough start. And of course, quick time tonight. I've already gotten a few replays there for the Smoking Sunday Challenge. Of course, that's great. Keep sending them in. Hope a patch doesn't appear to ruin them all, though, of course. Quite secured. And we are now seeing a move on to the heavy panzer core. Looks like Sage 6 is getting a bit desperate, calling in the bigger stuff. Although, interesting enough, of course, he could, you know, just have not checked up. And, you know, just gone for the Tiger tank, which he's got locked up. I mean, this has probably been costing him quite a bit of fuel, which could have you know, been saved up to Walter Tiger. But, let's, you know, not judge on that. And then again, of course, the Tiger is a bit limited in use. Slow advance up here, guards into support by T-34 going in against the Deer Squad. Which needs to get out of there very quickly as the T-34 is quite effective. I was about to say effective, but effective against infantry. half egg also arriving. Panzer Vapel Grenadiers need to get out of there now. At the same time, Stug charging in, barreling through. Not entirely sure why. Like going to be in front of a field gun if he's not careful. Misses the Stug, Pioneers getting suppressed here by Maxim, and we're seeing a strafing run going in. Maxim pinned to the ground, though that's not going to stop it from firing. Never did. And again, sending in the Stug like that, what is he thinking? And of course, he's going to have it lost because, again, it's not a tank. It's quite incredible why Sage of the Six keeps wasting stooks like that. Looking close there. Looks like a Panther F has arrived. And there we go, another Stuka down, this time crashing into the church. Causing the entire thing to fall down. So two Stuka so far on the count of this little half track. We also see a Panzer Air for out, but there's no tanks anymore. Which rather means there's nothing to stop the T-34, there's nothing to hold the front line together, which is increasingly crumpling for Sage of the Six, and now he's going to lose the Panzerwerfer. And there we go, Panzerwerfer is gone. Like the Noble Blitz as well, Morgengrad putting the most out of his tanks. Noble Blitz immobilized. And there we go, another smouldering wreck. To add to Sage of the Six is currently rather considerable what collection of smouldering wrecks. And certainly not the most effective use of the heavy panzer core when he spent all those resources just getting it. MG42 
MG recruit. Additional T-34 arriving. And of course a lot of people like to talk about the T-34-76 and they like to say it was superior to the Panzer IV. Well that's a, there's a slight problem there that was by early 1944, yeah it was sort of superior but that doesn't didn't stop the Russian folks, I'm losing a ton of them. And there we go, another Stuka down, another Stuka down and Veteran D2 for this thing by the way, again it is considerably powerful, should not be underestimated but still problem is of course multiplayer set by 1944-45 and that of course is the usual thing that a lot of them tend to neglect pointing out well apparently they're not clever enough to figure out either way by 1944-45 the T-34-76 was not very powerful its armor was by that time considerably thin because while it was slow 45mm armor there's something called overmatching which means if a 75mm round hits a slope 45 mm armor it's going to largely hit what is equivalent of just 45 mm of regular armor not sloped it largely negates the sloping of armor so that's something very important to remember and of course the gun itself was not necessarily that impressive either so there were several we problems with this by this time of course that was why they replaced it with the T-3045 which had a bigger gun more armor on the turret but still the main chassis of itself had very thin armor as well Again, some of those fun facts. A lot of people seem to only f remember very, very specific things about the T-3476 and then ignore the rest, which is generally also how you tell how much they actually paid attention in the history classes. T-34 rolls in. And there we go, we see him being forced away. Quite nicely done there, and the deer squad down. And another T-70 tank arriving. See, you see, still holding some of that, but he simply can't hold at this stage. The enemy has only 50 points remaining. But yeah, T-34, 76, legendary tank. But there's a lot of myth behind that. Less reality. And I know some people defend it to the death, but you know the thing was, it was an average tank. The good thing about it was it could reduce in large numbers. That was rather its advantage, and that was a simple to use, simple to maintain. That was also last time I made the Sherman tank a good tank. Well, that actually had stabilizers. Very crude ones, but still actually had stabilizers. Few tanks had that. I don't even think the German ones had stabilizers, to be honest. And a Panther arrives, a desperate call in from another Panzer division. To try and save the 18th Panzer Grenadiers from a horrific defeat. Guards reporting, capture complete. It is now under our control. Down to 25 points. Victory Slowly advancing, last. popping back to Sage of the Six. And in this case, he's actually just recklessly advancing in, perhaps feeling there's nothing else to do, and of course, immediately gets a gets up rammed. So, of course, that's just silly. A T-34 covering their point cover there. I mean, there's not really much you can do even if he wanted to. And there we go, game over, a loss to Zereich, a loss for the 18th Panzer Grenadiers, a victory for the 10th Tank Corps, good use of tanks, good use of light and medium, of course a lot of people just tend to focus on the H85, but still, if you know how to use the T-34, if you know how to use the T-70, you can actually get a lot out of them, but again, a lot of people you know, just tend to go for the most effective thing. Field guns were also used nice, and again, it would rather come down to the Sage of the Six Using his two excess tanks again, they're not tanks. Use them as assault guns and they'll do quite well. And that is supporting infantry, firing from rangers, and using them in greater numbers. But the problem was, he largely had them running around one at a time and getting quite easily outmaneuvered, which definitely didn't help. 
Of course, the half track was definitely a good move here from Morgan Grant, immediately countering pretty much several aircraft, stopping several of them in the process, shooting them down like they were paper targets. So again, well done, well upgraded, and again, it's something easy to recommend if you're facing some German players using air units, if you're facing a Russian player getting air units, get the anti-aircraft units, shoot them down. It really shouldn't be that difficult of an issue, it really shouldn't be a huge riddle to figure out, you know. But apparently for some people it is. Of course, also good move then, counting all those open blitzers, and again that was another problem with Sage of the Six, partly because he was holding so much frontage, he couldn't hold it, of course, that allowed Morgan Rats to constantly moving in. Constantly? Blah. Seemed to mess up a lot of Danish pronunciation all of a sudden in the English, which is not good, but he kept losing a lot of these trucks again, which was a lot of manpower wasted, and that was another problem for mm, Sage of the Six. So much manpower just wasted over and over and over again on these over blitzes, which he simply could not hold. So many senselessly and tragically lost. So in that sense, there were some problems, and again, the problem basically came down to a fault strategy of trying to hold too much without having sufficient units to actually hold it. And that, of course, is what Morgan Grant took quite handily advantage of. And of course, well done there. He kept up the pressure constantly, which is what a good player does. He does not give up. He does not sit back. He keeps pushing. He keeps finding the weak spots. And he keeps doing a lot of damage. So, well played there. And, of course, also a nice bit of use of smoke earlier about here. So, hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, want to subscribe. Tell your friends. If you did, we'll send a replay of your own. Provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.